Welcome back. We're here with John Luini, and before the break, he was showing us how to convert an LP track on a, a record album into a digital one on the PC. And in case you're just tuning in, here's how we hooked everything up. First, we had the turntable. This is the very important part, so you got to put the record on it. We connected that to our, our amplifier, just using an RCA cable. And this, the amplifier basically takes the sound from the record and makes it so that the PC, the sound card on the PC, which of course we've got connected to it as well, through an RCA cable to an, eight, uh, an eighth inch mini jack. Uh, that's how we get the sound from the record player to the PC. But that middle part, the amplifier, is the most important part of this process because without it, your stuff would sound not so good. And speaking of not so good, once we've got the audio, which, we've been, uh, which we took out of the record here, the, when it plays on the record, there are pops and hisses. How are you going to get rid of them? Well, thankfully, uh, Sonic Foundry, again, through the noise reduction plug-in that they have, allows you to just use that, and it's, they take care of all the hard work for you. There also are other plug-ins for, like Cool Edit I mentioned before, they have another one. And there are also you know, endless uh, hand you know, tweaking that you can do if you feel interested. Yeah. But we're going to take advantage of uh, Sonic Foundry's work and uh, go through a couple steps. First, we're going to remove the pops and clicks, and then after we do that, then we'll remove some of the hiss. Now, are the pops and clicks what happens because of the needle, the contact that it's actually making with the well, record? You can, you can get all sorts of dirt, and grime on your record. Could just be, you know, a combination of the needle. So many different reasons, you know, can come into play. Okay. Um, so if we listen to this, this is our raw wave file. There's the oh, section yeah. just at the beginning of the track where there's some pops and clicks that moves in the track. So what we do is we'll just go through and go to our click and crackle removal. And again, the defaults that they have here is just a great place to start. You can really go with that and just uh, click OK and let it process. Well, when you're doing stuff on mass, when you're doing a lot at a time, it's really good to have tools specialized instead of just hand tweaking for onesie twosies. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're trying to encode your whole archive of, <laughs> of vinyl, you want to have something you can just sort of go click OK, OK, OK. All right. So can we hear a before and after? Yeah, so there's uh, those, uh, the pops and click, and then, so I'll just, let me show you the, the hiss real quick. Okay. To do that, you go through and... Oh, it's a, it's a separate removal. Yeah, so this is a, the second stage. You go through and highlight that, go and to noise reduction. You highlight the section just before the song started, where it's just the hiss before the track. So it kind of gets a baseline. Exactly, and so what it'll do is it'll model that. So you click on capture noise prints, and it'll figure out what that hiss sounds like. And then I'll say, all right, well, I'm going to take that and remove it from the whole track now that I know what it sounds like. Wow. And so if we go through and preview that, it captures it. And then once we're done with that, we then select the whole data. And then we just click ahead and go. And then it processes. And it processes through. Now, I'm, I'm seeing here, and just to, to clarify, on the top we have, is that the right channel and the bottom is the left channel? It's That's exactly right. Stereo. OK. Yeah. Just making sure. Since we are working, of course, if you had a monophonic uh, <laughs> uh, record that was old, you know, you don't need the stereo for that. Sure. Um, so at this point, you get to your final, and then you want to do a normalization, which will just make sure that the level is as high as possible without distorting. And that'll just give you the best quality at the end. So once you go through and normalize, um, then you're pretty much set to go. And okay. if you want to hear a comparison, we yeah. can uh, play. Here's the... Uh, the raw track, which has a little bit of a hiss in the beginning. And then here's the cleaned up version. Wow. Which is going to be you know, so much cleaner. And then you can Holy also cow. go through and you can you know, do a little EQ on it. Sometimes you lose some bass or something like that. These tools have also equalizers and you can do all sorts of things. Dude, very impressive. Now, what can you do once you've got the WAV file done and saved? Once you've got it on your computer, you can burn it to a CD, just like uh, happened to Brett's neck. <laughs> or you can uh, also put it into an MP3. You can put it into any common uh, streaming format, Real Audio, Windows Media, QuickTime, etc. And Any uh, good resources for streaming online? Uh, well, certainly uh, my uh, site, thefezguys.com. We have five years of archives uh, of information up there. And uh, that's all free to read out. And uh, obviously, if you search online, you can, of course, find so much information. Just type in the key phrase of, of what you're looking for. What about legal issues with that stuff? Legal issues, of course. You know, in this case, we're taking a, a record we've already purchased and making a home copy. That's totally fine, just the same way as if you had put it onto a cassette. But you stick it on a CD, play it at home, in your car, etc. 
um, if you're going to start streaming this stuff to a worldwide audience, then you got to make sure that the people, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire, they put a lot of work into that. They want to get their, their money if you're going to be doing that sort of work with it. Very so. true. All right. Well, thank you, John, well, thank you. for all the work that you've done and helping us out, figuring out how to do this stuff. And I believe you're going to be sticking around for a call. We do have a, a question that's well, going to be coming around. Sure. If you want to learn more about going from vinyl to CD, just check out our website, techtv.com slash call for help. And be sure to check out John's book, Streaming Audio, The Fez Guy's Guide. You didn't bring your Fez today, John. I'm a little disappointed. It's available at bookstores everywhere, online and off. There's still a lot more great stuff on the way. Up next, brain teasers meet big prizes in the Wired World Challenge. You don't want to miss them. Across the country, people everywhere are tuning into a revolutionary new kind of radio that delivers more choice, better sound, and coast-to-coast -coast coverage. Introducing XM Satellite Radio. Part rocket science, part rock and roll, XM brings 100 channels of music, news, sports, and entertainment to your car or home for just $9.99 a month. It's easy to get XM, and you don't even have to replace your radio. XM adapters start at $200 without antenna, and you can save $50 if you call our toll-free number now. XM has it all, from programming you already know and love to an extraordinary range of original channels you can't hear anywhere else. XM puts 71 channels of music, 12 channels of news, 5 channels of sports, and 12 channels of talk and information at your fingertips, including more than 30 commercial-free channels. So join the radio revolution. Call our toll-free number now to save $50 on an XM system at a store near you. Waiting for a miracle? Wait no more. Now there's Pronto, your very own on-call assistant, live and at your service, with the instant answers that make life easier. Need driving directions? Pronto gets you there. Stuck in traffic? Pronto gets you out. Driving into a tunnel? Pronto calls you back. Pronto's your walking, talking, email-sending, full-service, toll-free super number, and it's yours for the asking. Need a market report? Pronto's up to the minute. Got a hot date? Pronto buys movie tickets. Vegetarian clients? Pronto reviews restaurants, makes reservations too. There's no buttons to push, no endless menus. It works from any phone, and it's a cinch to sign up. It's no contract. It's unlimited. It's more than just answers. Pronto, how may I help you? It's a solution. Pronto, your on-call assistant. Change everything you know. Try Pronto today risk-free for 30 days. Call 1-800-790-2528 to sign up now. It's time for the Wired World Challenge, sponsored this month by Buy.com. We've got the questions and the prizes. Now, what we need now is a contestant. Kat, who do we have today? On the line, Chris, it's Anthony from Madison, Wisconsin. When he's not working at Home Depot, he's a fragging machine in Unreal Tournament. Ooh, Anthony. Hey, hey, can you tell me where I can find some nails for my PC? Nails for your PC? Do you have I'm those? I'll be in the hardware aisle if you want to nail it. <laughs> Oh, Anthony, it's good to have you on today. I got questions from four categories. You'll pick your favorite one, and I'll ask you a tech or science-related trivia question. You'll have 15 seconds to come up with your answer. And the best part is, if you answer correctly, you get a shot at our prize board, where we've covered up some really nifty prizes, including another Palm, uh, some uh, wireless headphones, uh, a GeForce 4 video card, and some Logitech's THX speakers. So you got a lot of good stuff to choose from, if you get it right. So you ready for the categories, Anthony? Yes, I am. All right, we'll see which aisle you like here. Technology devices, pop culture, electric future, and digital audio. Which one do you like most there, Anthony? Digital audio. Digital audio it is. Boy, it's, we're sticking with a theme today, aren't we? All right, here we go. you got 15 seconds. What audio compression standard made trading and downloading songs on the Internet infamous? MP3. MP3 is right, and big layer 3 encoding. Of course, that's what we're talking about doing. MP3s are just absolutely... You have a lot of MP3s, Anthony? Uh, yeah. You going to hook up Home Depot so they can play it over the loudspeakers? I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. You got it right, dude, and that means you get a shot at our gigantic prize board. We've got 25 numbers up there. Which one do you like the most? Number 17. Number 17 sounds lucky to me. Oh, it's a set of wireless headphones, which, of course, you could use to listen to MP3s wirelessly around your house. So then when you're doing the dishes and stuff, you can have, in fact, bring it into work. Set it up at work so you can walk around, just be bopping and stuff like that. And people going, hey, excuse me, can you tell me where the nails are for my PC? Congratulations, <laughs> Anthony. Thank you.
I'm sure you'll enjoy them. And a huge thanks to Buy.com for supplying all the great prizes on the big board. The Wired World Challenge is happening every day, and I swear we have tons of winners, like Anthony, who just won the wireless headphones. So be sure to head over to our website to sign up. I'm telling you, whoever you are, sign up. You just might be our next big winner. Now let's answer a live call for help. Kat, who do we have on the line? There's just not a bad prize on that board, huh, Chris? On the line, it's Barry from Columbia, Maryland. He has a question about mini jacks. Ah, okay. And we got John back here to help answer this question since it is audio related. What's the question precisely, Barry? My question is, the um, I just saw the segment on uh, recording from a turntable into the computer. Uh, you use an eighth inch jack that comes from the amplifier into the back or your sound card. Uh, is that a stereo or a mono jack? John? Well, if you want to actually have a stereo sound, which you probably do if you have a record uh, created in the last 50 years, uh, you want to use stereo, definitely. And uh, you can sort of tell the difference of them. I don't know if you can see this. Here, I can hold them up. But uh, in your left hand, you've got a stereo. And you can see it's got two little lines here to sort of separate each channel actually in there. And on the right hand, you've got just a mono. And this is from the in-ear okay, uh, so uh, headphones here. The notches really kind of give it away. Exactly. So the, on the, go the gold one I have, the red colored one has two notches. Maybe very subtle difference. Can you see those, Barry? Absolutely. Okay, and then of course this one being the the, the mono jack. Now you could not get a, a stereo sound then out of a, a mono connection, correct, John? Yeah, you would not get a stereo sound. You could try if you only had a mono connection, then you could make your sound card sort of you know map that to both channels, but you would be missing out on an entire channel of your record, and that'd be bad. Okay, Barry, does that specifically address the question that you had then? Yes, it does. All right, you got a lot of albums you're you're itching to uh, translate. I've got some 12 inches from some friends have done, and and I had no way to get them into the computer, so I've been looking at some alternatives to uh, listening to them on the turntable. Good. It sounds like this will this will get you going then. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you for the call. Great question, Barry. Thanks a lot. And thank you for helping us out, John. My pleasure. It's always good to have audio experts come in every once in a while. Everybody, you have one more chance to take our daily quiz. Head to techtv.com slash call for help. Click on that little quiz link thing that we have there. Give us the right answer, and you'll be in the running for that call for help VHS video thing, which you shouldn't play in your DVD player, because DVD is not a format that's compatible with VHS. Here's today's quiz. What is a normalizer? Is it a screen cleaner, a floppy formatter, a volume leveler, or Jimmy Carter? I thought it was Jimmy Carter, but apparently... Listen up. We brought in a very special consultant to help us with our fundamentals. This is a triangle. Triangle. What's this? Triangle. What's this? Triangle. What's this? The bill. What'd that cost? Four million dollars. And he's not gonna stick around to see if it works? You know, son, interest rates have changed. I know, Mom. I'm a loan officer at the bank. So I've decided to refinance the house. Okay, I can help you. Where'd you go? I'm calling Dijek.com. Mom! Want to refinance your mortgage to a lower fixed rate before rates go up again? Just call 1-800-71-FIXED. I lost another loan to Ditech. Ditech.com, your mortgage solution delivered. Are you losing your hair? Is that bald spot getting bigger? Medical studies have reported the body chemical DHT is the leading cause of hair loss. We've developed Avacor, a natural herbal treatment that stops DHT from attacking your hair follicles. Avacor regrows hair in balding areas. We guarantee it. Stop DHT from ruining your life. Call 800-767-2203. Use Avacor risk-free for three full months. Call 800-767-2203. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. 
and you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Up next on Tech TV. Hi. Max is back. Max Headroom. Max Headroom. What kind of sh sh show is this, anyway? <laughs> Identify station. Coming up next, only on Tech TV. The network that's a real mind blower. We asked you, what is a normalizer? Is it a screen cleaner, a floppy formatter, a volume leveler, or Jimmy Carter? And the answer is C, a volume leveler. As John had talked about earlier, if you've got a WAV file or a sound file that may be a little too soft, you could bump it up using the normalization tool that should come standard in most audio applications. And that'll make it sound a lot clearer without distorting any of the sound. <laughs> now, are you feeling lucky? Well, are you? You should, because it's time for a bonus tip. Here's a little handy tip for anyone who uses Outlook or Outlook Express to send email attachments. This is what I do. I, I go to the inbox, and instead of like creating a new message and then adding the file through the button, the attachment paperclip button, this is all I do. Let's say I wanted to attach sleepy.jpg. I take the file and drag it into the inbox, and look at that. It's attached. That's, that's all you have to do. That's how easy it is. Don't worry about the clicking file and attachments and all that junk. Let me show you how easy it is again. I'll close that window, and the sleepy JPEG is what I want to attach. I just drag it into my inbox, an empty space in my inbox, or on a message, and click, boom, it's attached. And then I just send it to cat at techtv.com, hit send, and it's gone. That's how easy it is. How's that? <clears throat> you know, my computer results are in, and it seems that your favorite mouse alternative is, drum roll, please. Gotta love our sound effects crew here on Call for Help. <laughs> It's the optical mouse, yeah, just like I like it. See, this, this, this mouse here, it's got a ball inside it. It's not optical, but an optical mouse has actually got a light inside of it. And that light helps illuminate where it is on the surface, and it's taking a pull. There's like a little camera inside that's taking a pull over everything that's on the table. So if, you, if it notices that the picture shifted this way, then it moves your mouse cursor that way. And that's what an optical mouse is. We've got the uh, details at techtv.com slash call for help under the My Computer section. You still got time to post your feedback if you have to. Whoa, holy cow. We've got a lot of people. Oh, look at that. Still using a mouse. Log Logitech trackball. People like Logitech. I, I like the Microsoft series. I've always liked their, their mouses, though. A lot of good stuff. If you're looking for a new mouse, here would be the place to find out. Now. Be sure to stay tuned for our next show because I'm going to be asking you what your favorite desktop theme is, like what kind of colors you use, and, and whole. I'll wait till next week to explain it. Hey, a special thanks to all the people in Israel, specifically Avi and Martin. They submitted content here. We like getting that international thing going on uh, with Call for Help since we are indeed an international show. Now, we also on our website have message boards, which is where people can go to post their questions. And Kat, do we have any questions that we can find right here on the message yeah, boards you know, today? Um, this is something that I think we're going to start doing. So go ahead and post questions, and hopefully you'll get it answered. Um, this message board is from Techie007. Mm. He says, hey, I'm building my own computer, and I seem to be having some trouble finding a decent CRT monitor. I need one that supports a high resolution, da 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 uh, Chris, what do you think? <laughs> Where do you see the da 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 da? <laughs> I'm just making that up. <laughs> okay, I, it's a really good question actually. Getting a good monitor is very important to having a good computing experience. CRT would be a cathode ray tube, or you know the ones that weigh like 800 pounds. Uh, he said I, I saw he was looking for a minimum resolution of about 1600 by 1200, uh -huh. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And that's that's pretty high. You'd brought you'd want to have a bigger monitor because of course you'd have more screen space. You're talking about the, our resolution right here. I think is only. 800 by 600, and let me right-click on the desktop to find... Oop, I guess Outlook Express is still open. Just close, darn you! <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't want to save the message. Right-click on the desktop, properties, settings. Yeah, 800 by 600. He uh -huh. wants it to be... Now, look at this graphic here on the middle of the screen. If I bump it up and show you the difference between the two, see how much... Ooh, that's 600 by 900, a little bit more. Uh -huh. He's talking about getting something that high, so you'd want a bigger monitor, a larger one. I'd say a 19-inch should be sufficient, of course, if you want to look even bigger with that high resolution, which is going to make graphics and images a lot more crisp. Uh, make sure you get uh, something a little larger, maybe a 21-inch monitor. Of course, it's also going to be heavy and very power-hungry. As far as 
companies, manufacturers. I've always been pretty happy with ViewSonic. Uh, Roger's also a big fan of the Sony series, the Trinitron, Trinitron series. But cool. maybe I'll have to ask that for my computer in the future. All right. Thanks, Chris. Well, thank you, Kat. I'd also like to thank our guests, John Luini and Adam Sessler. And a big thanks to all of you for watching. See you later.